of the ways to keep the memories and legacies of Nigerian heroes and heroine is by maintaining and preserving these iconic individual tales in the educational sector. This has been the calling of the progeny of the supreme leader and first paramount ruler of Egba land in Abe Okuta, Ulubi Yakiri Lewo Shodeke. I find it so sad when I, I, I was asking a, a teenage girl at the time about Fela Nikolaku and she said she doesn't even know Fela Nikolaku. So it's that serious. The coming generation are becoming so um, ignorant of their past. They are becoming so ignorant of, um, of what our heroes are fought for. So yes, of course it's our right. We want to know what uh, happened, what our father, the roles they play. Like me now, I'm so proud of my forefather because when I get to know the role they play to the state and to what Abekta is right now, I'm proud to even associate myself with it. You understand? So history plays a very, very um, important role, even in self-realization and, and in a lot of psyche of, 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 a, of, of a child. So I would advocate for history to be brought back to school curriculum. I was in primary school. The history of Shodeke, the history of Egbal and the history of Shodeke is was in the syllabus there. You see, history cannot, it cannot be erased. That is one thing you cannot take away from Shodeke's family house. So we still have some of it in the archive that is properly kept. And when you go to Alake of Egbalan's Palace, you'll find, find the first Bible that was presented to Shodeke as the cradle of Christianity in Egbalan. You'll find it in Alake of Egbalan. So I will still implore the government to, to at least give him that honor to let it be, continue to be taught in school. At the 176 posthumous anniversary of the late monarchy, the family head Olakunle Shodeke appealed to all Shodeke's descendants to stay united and continue to uplift the name of their family's heritage. At this stage of a long history in the Garland, it has become imperative that we and each and every one of us allow the court of family ties that bind us together become more stronger than ever. One of the great grandsons of the legend, Ola Dimeji Aderi Ola Shodeke, officially launched his second novel at the event, titled Dwelling in the Belly of the Beast. Well, I've always been motivated by um, reality. Uh, we have um, there is a reality that is in Africa that is different from the European world. So our African reality and predicament has led me to actually want to hear my own voice also and tell our own stories. And so um, I'm motivated by um, the way uh, my experience has been shaped over time. I've been uh, involved in many things and I've passed through many things. I've had encounter with a lot of people. So I draw my inspiration from people, reality. Ola Dimeji reviewed the six-chapter novel why the family members and relatives converge on the towel of Orori Shodeke for prayer and homage. Abiba Tajai, TV24 News.